crew of 25 or 30 sailors that brought it out to the West Coast. Oh, is that right? And the guy I talked to about, he said, I'm the guy that sold it to Elvis Presley. Hey, everyone, welcome back. Today, I'm in uh, Oakland, California, and I'm going to see uh, President Roosevelt's um, yacht called the USS Potomac. And I'm gonna get a tour of it. I made an appointment. Uh, it's got quite a history to it, so come along and let's go check out this uh, floating White House, is what they call it. All right, welcome aboard the Potomac. About to get a tour of the historic floating White House. So the history of this ship is it's an ex um, Coast Guard cutter originally built for the um, rum runners and uh, during Prohibition. But then when Prohibition ended, um, it became a ferry and then it became the floating White House. Elvis Presley was involved with it. So there's all sorts of interesting stories that it has to tell. So a couple of cool. ticket services, a couple of uh, rooms below, right? Galley, you know, not galleys, but rooms, quarters for one for secret service with I think two beds in it, and then the, all the crew, kind of down below here, they have hot box, which which I've learned what that means. Yeah, that's the twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. It's always somebody yeah. in sleeping, rotating, and so on. So it's yeah. kind of a cool. I mean, I I didn't grow up with. I wasn't in the military. I didn't grow up with a military okay. background or history. My dad, Elliot, was in the military during World War Two. He was a pilot overseeing and looking at uh, um, installations of, of uh, radar stuff in Where was in, in he North based? Africa. He was in North Africa. Oh, okay. Flying over all the stuff there in Germany where they were installing radar stuff. He was over my, flying um, to see them. My great, my grandfather was a P-51 mechanic. Okay. Wow. So he's got, um, and he was so good they kept him in the U.S. Nice. So he didn't have to go overseas. Yeah, well, my, dad, my dad and his brothers are four boys, they all signed up immediately. When the, when the war broke yeah. out, they all showed up in their dad's office, in the Oval Office, in uniform, and said, we're off. That was the hip thing to do back then, right? Well, it was, it was, the, it was the thing to do. It wasn't just even hip or not. It was right. what you just did. Right, exactly. I mean, if you read stories of World War II, histories of the war, there were young, mostly boys, signing up to go fight. Yeah. And there was 15, 16, 17-year-old kids lying about their age to go fight. So like, all this stuff here, the, the way this is maintained, it's yeah. all maintained by volunteers who keep it in really good condition. Oh, it's nice and varnished. Yeah, yeah. so the, the guys that did this, one guy um, that did this kind of took it down to bare wood. Wow. And restored it. He comes back over every one, he's 85 years old. He comes over on a regular basis just to clean it up. And make That's sure awesome. It's, these are all going to be changed out soon. We've got to raise the money for it. Okay. But when we sail, if the weather permitting, they're up. We raise them up so you get a great view. This is all designed by FDR, even though these, this has been this is a replacement. So he could climb on there, take his braces off, and slide back and give his legs a break. Yeah. It was interesting, his public persona, you know, he didn't let people he, know. He, was, he, he recovered from polio, was the public image. Yeah. So when he was standing and he were giving a talk, usually he had his arm, his hand and clapped. Leg one, of his, one of his boys, Jim or, or my dad, right. holding onto their arm like that. Right. And he had leg braces from the hips down, locked, he'd stand up and he'd snap, yeah. snap them in place. How he how he got away how he got away with that is a miracle. But there was, wasn't really cameras everywhere back then. Well, there were, but they had a, they had an un, you know quiet agreement with the press. Don't don't publish pictures of the president in a wheelchair. Imagine nowadays they wouldn't that would just fly. I don't even know. the last thirty seconds. Yeah, I don't know if he'd even get elected today. Yeah. But this is you know this is sort of a hang wow, place. very luxurious. It, it is well when these are open, it's really luxurious. And over here. Um, it, where, oh, it's, we moved it. It's inside now, I guess. There's a bar that's not usually out here. Okay. There's also one inside. Huh. Yeah, I saw some black and white pictures of him. Sitting with, back here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're on the website. One of them's with the queen, I guess. I know. She was on the ship. Yeah. My grandmother was on the ship, even though she didn't like going on it. She had an accident as a young girl on it. 
on an ocean going vessel. Oh wow! And it was it, was, it struck an iceberg or something. Uh. I don't know what it was. I have to look it up again. But they took her as a young girl and they held her out over the side and dropped her in a lifeboat. So you can imagine the trauma as a young kid. So she wasn't wild. Or and then and you got the Titanic in her mind too. I'm Probably sure. Did, yeah. And and, and the Lusitania. Yeah. That was in everybody's mind back then after World War One. Yeah, that's a good point too. Wow. I know. Okay. A lot of history here. A lot of history here. Can you just imagine all the people he sat back here with? Uh, it's coming hot, up because he was. A, this is before term limits, right? How long he was yeah, president he was, he was for? Twelve years. Twelve years. He was in it. He was starting his fourth term when he died. He was, you know, nineteen forty-five. Was the start of the fourth. Twelve term. years of running the country. That's amazing. Yeah. And he would have done if he'd lived. He would have done sixteen years. Yeah, I mean, that, the, the amount of pressure, I guess at oh. first, after a while, it's probably no big deal then. Well, I think that the, t the tone of the country then with World War II occupying so much of his presidency and the Depression, right. nobody wanted to switch horses. Right. And he Too was doing risky. such a good job yeah. pulling us out of the Depression and everything else. Yeah. I mean, when he took office in 1933, mm -hmm. well over a third of the country was unemployed. Yeah. So he, he would sit back here, I, I'd like to imagine this. Yes. With Francis Perkins, the Secretary of Labor, who served as Secretary of Labor all four of his terms. What, really? She was the only cabinet person who stayed throughout all of his presidency. Wow. She helped, she was the architect of Social Security, unemployment insurance, and so on. Amazing. I would imagine things we benefit from now. Things we, we all do. And I think that she probably, with FDR and others, sat back here and came up with some good policy. I bet. Where was this uh, docked when he was a president? It was docked just in Washington and Maryland, whatever. Okay, so it did a lot there, of yeah, close to, close to the White House. Okay. So they, they take him over, they get him on the ship, and he would sometimes go up to Hyde Park, up the Hudson River. Okay. Sometimes down to Florida, he'd be fishing off the coast of Florida on the ship. So this, this was, did some this pretty is, good trips. Yeah, I think. think of this as a floating Camp David. Okay. Because that's what he had then. He had this to get out. And he was a water-oriented man because he was under secretary of navy for a number of years yeah so this was his this was his safety valve that he could let off you know whatever anxiety he had just go out on the water and fish and entertain people it was a great place was he the only president to have one of these or it kind of everybody else said oh it's no, a great idea truman sold this and that's where it started to change hands when oh, okay. Died. okay he didn't want it um i think um john kennedy had the sequoia if i'm not mistaken Train. Yeah, they go by there day. Were at least two or three. Hourly. Two or three yachts. You know, but it's not a normal thing for a president to have one. Not anymore. Yeah. And this, if you look at the floors, that's about the bulk of most of the wood on the ship. And then you look at the walls, he did not want a wood framed ship because okay. of his fear of fire. Ah. He was in a wheelchair, remember that? Yeah, that's a good. So and these are all, these are, uh, the, he the, could these roll. These are teak. And these were laid down when the ship was being restored by one of our current board members. He's older now, but he put these down. Wow. That's amazing. Well, Very neat. Further, yeah. Again, all these are maintained and written by Mike Torrey. The guy comes over from San Francisco. He's a retired stockbroker. And he took it on to sand them down to the bare wood and, and refinish them. I know the amount of work involved. Oh. I used to do woodworking. Okay, so you know. Yep. Look at these uh, brass hinges here. Nice? Yeah. Just the detail of that is really nice. So one of our volunteers, this is a neat story. It's all brass. Oh, yeah. One of our new volunteers yeah. is a, a doctor named Annie Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Annie showed up on a cruise, I don't know, it was months ago when we were out cruising. And after the cruise was over, yeah. she came over and she started talking to Tom or somebody else thinking, I yeah. want to volunteer. How do I volunteer? I'm, yeah. I'm flipped out. I can't even believe I've never been on it. So she filled out some paperwork, came over and introduced herself to me. Yeah. Turns out she's a pediatrician with Kaiser based in Oakland. Wow. And her wife is very close friends with my son-in-law from his doctoral research at Stanford. They're both doctors. And they did their PhD work together. That's amazing. In a lab That's a, at what a small... Uh, he lives in Connecticut now. And she wow. lives here. The two women live here. And I haven't met Annie's wife yet, but I will. But... He, she and my son-in-law are good friends because they did the same lab work together in genetics. So Annie said, I want to volunteer. So I got an email from her yesterday or texting. Yeah. Are you on the ship today? I wasn't on the ship yesterday. She said, I'm going to go over and volunteer. I have a lot of brass I want to polish. 
<laughs> That's awesome. She just volunteers. And she's a doctor. Isn't and that... That, makes time to that do just it. shows you how life is. It's a yeah, small this, world, this you know? Really, I should tell. Send your picture. I saw, I saw your handiwork. So your general um, income is donations and charters? It's all donations, charters, and ticket sales. Okay. So this is the president's galley. This is the president's cook when he's on board. Oh, yeah? <laughs> What's your specialty? Ed's Benedict? or? Um, no, actually, it's uh, omelets. I make a killer omelet. One of these days, I'm going to do it for everybody. Denver? I've done that before. In here? In here, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'll bring in the high price eggs. Yeah, I know. Eight dollars a dozen. Eight dollars a dozen. Put here. Unless you go to Costco and get them by the well, 60s. They have these ones at Safeway that are blue, and they charge at eleven ninety nine for them. Oh. I don't know why they're blue. I don't know either. It looks uh, like uh, Annie was polishing brass yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> um, the reason they're blue is oh, because you know the, the, reason. The, the color of the eggs is the color of the hen. So if you get an aracuna or a hen that is uh, black or, or multicolored yeah it'll either be a green or a blue egg um, the, the brown eggs come from a brown hen and the white eggs come from a white hen oh okay I you knew, just told uh, me something I never knew yeah if only I, our racial politics were as simple <laughs> this is the this is the uh, salon the dining area where the you salon go. this is where and that's your uh, state room was there you go okay that too. yeah for sure so so this is where he would have his dignitary uh, conferences, Someone's right? Yeah, that's right. We're waiting for you. And this is where he hung out, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, mostly the band there. Yeah, back there. Yeah. But this is this is a pretty austere stateroom without a lot of no gold fixtures. So he intentionally kind of toned it down. Is that what you're saying? I don't know that he intentionally. This is what he did. Yeah. I mean, this is the bar that's usually on the back. Because the president could have the most, the most fancy... And they installed his bathtub in there. So that's the original bathtub, too? Uh -huh. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's kind of small. Well... <laughs> You'd have to sit in the fetal position, I think. Well, you didn't take up much space. No. But he's a big guy, 6'3". But having like normal a hot and water tap on a, mm -hmm. on a ship, mm -hmm. um, impressive. And then mm -hmm. this is would be um, big enough to accommodate his wheelchair. He could get over here and his age would help him get in the Okay. Bathroom. This is before they had the, the bars that would yeah, help and this people. Was, this was not here. Yeah, this, this oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they had a little port to look out. Mm -hmm. And what was his dog's name again? Fowler. Fowler. Fowler? F-A-L-A. Mm -hmm. a, a girl dog then, I imagine. No, a boy. Oh, really? Huh. These are various pictures. That's David. Yeah. That's my uncle, um, who is it? That's Franklin Jr. My dad's not in that picture, and Eleanor's over on the far right. So it's a lot of grandchildren. Huh. I was not born when he was alive. Mm. But pretty, I mean, pretty much replicas of everything he had in here. This is a nice place to do it. You have your shave in the morning. Yep. And look out. You hope when you're shaving, your the ship is not rocking too much. <laughs> That's a good point. You're using a straight edge, right? Probably. This is my uncle Jim right there. Uncle Jim. Uncle Jim, Jim, his son, his oldest son. So do you have, um, you don't have any personal memories of this? You of know, this? Yeah, like as a kid or anything. No, I didn't see it until I was a, an adult went right, right after it landed here and docked. Oh, okay. So that's what I assumed. Yeah. I like the flag here. Is this an official mm -hmm. something? <laughs> Oh yeah, nice picture. No, the writing next to it. Oh. In here. Wow. Yeah. It's hand operated. Huh? It ropes because his upper body was very powerful. Excellent. He did a lot of work working out to get around in his chair. 
So when they put this in here, you'll see when we go up top. Yeah. He can pull himself up by a hand. Wow. So it's a fake smokestack. Hmm. His bar. For the uh, pilot house is open. Oh, it is? Yeah. Nice. Okay. What's the story of the bell there? That's the original bell. It's on loan from the Navy Historical Center. And we are not allowed to polish it. Yeah. Turn that, I think turn that one over to, to uh, yeah. our friend who polishes all the brass. Is it accidentally? No, no, no. You're not, we're not allowed to touch it? No, you're not allowed to. Why? Uh, mm -hmm. It's supposed to be kept as is. Who wants to keep its uh, patina? Yeah. So once a year I have to take Can I lightly bring it? Yeah. Well, there's, there's like a, a wooden thing in there to keep it. Just, oh. just smack it. Hang on. It's actually broken on the back, just like the Liberty Bell. Oh, really? It's got a crack in it? It goes about a third of the way around. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. There, I did watch a video about this being um, lost and recovered. The bell? Yeah. Yeah, I think it went through a period where nobody knew where it was. Yeah, and then... It was recovered in a museum somewhere. Apparently the story was that someone knew some very higher ups in the military and they said, we want this bell, and suddenly it got discovered. Oh, so, huh? sounds right. Well, I better get that out of my back closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. This uh, ship was uh, completely restored in 95 and to up to seaworthy conditions. And it was, a, like I said, it was part of the Coast Guard in the early 30s. And it's also got a history of being a ferry and ended up in Barbados as a ferry and then neglected and sank and then had to get recovered from there. And President's Gallery. This is where all the good food was made. Looks like this is original fan too. Okay. That's state room. When I say state room, it's a state room. Wow. Now, what does the word state room mean? Is that a level up from it's, a regular room? Yeah, or? well, I'll show you with the crew quarters in a minute. Okay. State room has got nice beds. Okay. It's got its own bathroom. It's kind of a captain quarters on a military ship. Yeah, kind of. I mean, captain but even better. Even uh, better. They did eat us? Yeah. And this is the... Now, this tub is definitely not original. <laughs> yeah. It's more of a guest room now. Yeah, it's a guest room. And they got all these great ports out of look out. Wow. Aren't they great? I yeah. Know. You're on a ship and you know it. This is a guest stateroom with its own bathroom. Oh wow, okay. If you if you stayed here, you definitely need um, some warmth. <laughs> you you can turn on the heater. There's oh, there's heater. a heater right yeah, there. Yeah, you're good to go. Wow. And I imagine they're pretty effective too. I'm sure they are, yeah. This has its own shower. This is high end. So this never gets used though, does it? No, it doesn't. Yeah. You know. So what what when they added all this stuff that was it? It was a replica of what it was like when FDR was on it. Okay. So when he had guests. So yeah, but a lot of this was probably I don't I don't know for sure, but yeah. If this was underwater, it wouldn't necessarily destroy all this. Right. Because this would be destroyed, but right, of course. this wouldn't. And the structural setup is probably the same. Yeah. Huh. But it's all functioning and it all works. The pictures, of course, of FTR are all in place. Yeah. As it should be. Is this a champagne bottle significantly important? Or? Uh, not to me. I don't drink champagne, but <laughs> I'm sure it is. It, uh, it, it, if it was a christening one, it would have been broken. So I don't think it, it is a christening one. Here's a picture of him on, on the ship here. Uh huh. Hmm. He loved it. He was quite a fisherman. With another bathroom and shower. Oh, so this is a different. Wow. Yeah. They, they look similar. I know. Oh, that's right. That is the opposite. So he had a lot. He, it seems like he really cared about his guests. He did. Having a nice place to Good enjoy to their sleep. stay. So can you imagine this ship out in the Gulf of Mexico or wherever, up and down the coast? Yeah. The East coast? 
out at sail. Yeah. You know, you want to be stable because this in the in the Atlantic, this was an ocean going vessel. It could it could go out in the ocean. This it would be pretty it nauseating. In a <laughs> well, no, it was, it was structurally stronger before right. it was destroyed and, and sunk. So when it was rebuilt, it wasn't rebuilt to go into the water past the Golden Gate Bridge for very long. Okay. Because that's much rougher. Yeah. So when he used it, though, he at one point he used it to go up into past Martha's Vineyard in that area in the Cape out to meet a military vessel, a military vessel to get on. They put him on that one to go meet with Winston Churchill. Okay. And this one went back and forth like I was fishing with it with a Secret Service guy dressed as him in the back in the fantail, so they didn't know where he was going. He went. Oh really? Winston, he went out to meet Winston Churchill in secret to form the Atlantic Atlantic Charter. Wow. This took him to that rendezvous. That's a cool story. Isn't it? Huh. So, so it, yes, it was ocean going. Is this for heat or? It's for air, air, yeah. Just air, yeah. air conditioning? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Some pictures here. All the reporters taking notes. Yep. Yeah. Listening to his every word. Here's a fancy dinner picture. Oh, wow. Yeah, very he nice. Was, he was a sailor. He grew up as a little boy with a sailboat on the Hudson River. Here's about the engines. Hmm. So there was another that was called the Sequoia, the original one. Yeah. This replaced it. Got it. It's funny, the ship from the exterior doesn't seem that big, but then you get on it, you start yeah. walking around, you're like, wow. Here's the Secret Service quarters. Were they intentionally built for them? Yeah. Hmm. Just crossed. Yep. I thought it was a mirror for yep. a minute. <laughs> cool, huh? Yeah. Wow. They even had ports. So they must, I wonder what their I mean, they got the president out in the open waters. So it was they must well have had, I was going to say, they must have had stuff you didn't, they didn't tell anybody about or of something. Of course they did, yeah. <laughs> Probably some long range so guns. Pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. How many Secret Service guys did he have? Two? He didn't have too many more before the war, then after the war he had a lot. They were probably insisted that they... And they were all military, you know, sailors and so on. Yeah. When he was here. And this is the captain of the ship? One of the captains, yes. Huh. I, th I, I didn't even dawn on me. I'm like, you were talking about him so much that I thought, oh, well, someone's got to pilot the ship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the president's not doing it. That's pretty neat. I like this whole picture, too. Yeah. Hmm. So it was restored in 95, that was my understanding, huh? 95, yeah, it, was, it came over here in 95, but it was uh, it was up in the harbors, up in uh, uh, Stockton Shipyards. Oh, okay. Where they did most of the repairs. Yeah. One of the crew, engineer officer. Engineering officer. Okay, engineering officer. All right. And we got two ports. Here. Nice little hat. So he's, this is a step up. Step up. This guy. But still no bathroom. Yeah. Well, they had, I mean, you can't have bathrooms. There's plenty of bathrooms everywhere. Can't have bathrooms everywhere, right? Yeah. Still, they had ports to look out. Yep. This is what you came in here. Yep. I mean, if you don't have a port, you can get kind of um, freaky in there. <laughs> I imagine. Go ahead. So this is the crew. This is the crew the direction where the crew is. You can see that. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about the sea. I was want the seaworthiness of the ship. Very but, seaworthy. I, we've gone out on the Golden Gate Bridge many times, usually about a hundred yards or so. And the captain will say, you know, it could get a little rockier out here, yeah. but it hasn't. But then they come about and come back under the under the bridge. But okay. when they rebuilt it, they they didn't build it back to the same standards it had when FDR was sailing on wow. the what was what's below deck it had to be improved right it, it, it his was stronger to sail oh it was than the, re, than the rebuilding it was. oh let's save money probably right probably yeah interesting so there you go
42 enlisted personnel. That's a lot. It's a lot. On this. There'll be a lot of action going on. Hey, and they got a little bench to yep. play cards at. Was it? This wasn't a hot bunk, though, huh? No. Uh, <laughs> these were. Yeah. Uh, and all these were. Yeah. Ship's office. That's where payday happened. Probably, yeah. <laughs> this is where we, this is the hot hot bunks, where we store a lot of stuff, also. Yeah. So 42, you got, what do you got, 16 bunks here? Four, yeah. eight, 16. So 16 would be sleeping and the other half would be working. working and right. So you could carry, you know, up to 30 people eat pretty easily on here if they're, if they're rotating the bunks. Yeah. And then this would be a, um, something happens, you get running up there. And they're all open when you're sailing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Huh. It's pretty intense, isn't it? Yeah. So you've been on Navy ships, so you know. Oh, yeah. What you're looking at. They all have the same um, linoleum, too. It's funny. Yeah, sure. In the 50s or 40s or 50s. These are great views out here, so we're going to go up top. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. I like the wood trim around the. Yeah, nice. Yeah, captain's. Okay, let's go up and look at the captain's. Hang captain's on. quarters. The wheelhouse. Uh, look, the wood. The, the gentleman did all this wood, huh? Did nice. Yeah. All right. Looks like these are original. Some of this is original. This is original. This has been replaced, and this is brand new. Our radar. Ah. Uh, well. This looks uh, familiar too. With all the military ships. Yep. When you're up here and the captain's up here, it's a great view from up here when you're sailing. Oh, I bet. And this radar, when we had that installed, yeah, they've been explained it to me. You can see something like 30 miles in every direction of what's out there. And it's mostly looking for other ships. Other stuff that you don't want to run into, or ships or whatever. Yeah. And these crank open. Yep. Huh. And the engines, and the, RPMs. And the, yeah. and the radios work. We can communicate with anybody anywhere on the radios. So during your during the uh, chartering season, how often you every weekend? Hopefully, we go almost every weekend. Yeah, twice, yeah, sometimes three times a week. And then on charters, we go out like special charters, like uh, Blue, Blue Angels. We go out four times that week, and we'll go out during opening day on the bay, which is when all the ships come out and okay. celebrate being out back on the bay. Right. You know, opening of sailing season, we'll go, we'll go out for that. We kind of lead the parade for, with all the ships. Oh, nice. I mean, it's a very special. You've never, you've never sailed on it. No, no. We'll get you on. Yeah. You got the go. um. What was I gonna say? When the oh, the, did corporations charter it too and they, private both, parties? I'm working on a Wells Fargo charter right okay. now. Okay, that's what yep. I thought. They do. You gotta get the Silicon Valley guys coming too. Yeah, if you know anybody, have them call me. With all their money. I know. Yep. You know the the challenge with it is. You know, as you look out here, come on out here, you'll see yeah. I'll explain this to you. Okay. You know, in answer to that comment, you do want to do that, but you also want to make sure people you bring on for charters have a level of appreciation for the ship. Right. Versus Respect. those party ships over there, those party boats. Right. See the great big ones? Yeah. They're very different. They carry two, three hundred people. Yeah, the half of them are inebriated. <laughs> exactly. Whereas <laughs> you can certainly have a few beverages on the ship if, right. if we, if we provide it. But there's a different feel right. for the ship when it's on the water than there is for those. Yeah. This you is, want to bring people This is floating history. You want, so. a sense of, want to get a sense of that. Yeah. yeah. So one of these smokestacks you were saying was uh, fake. Right here. Huh. I see. <laughs> that would be the fake so one. So you just roll out? Yeah. That's the people back here. So this is the hand pulley elevator. Yep. And when he he would, someone would open the door for him and he'd roll on out. Huh. 
and we've installed updated we have speakers all over the ship for music when we're out cruising nice we have a narrator usually up here sometimes like during blue angels week yeah we have narrators back over here if you look above the captain of the pilot house there's a little deck up above the pilot house yes we had we had two blue angels pilots oh wow there, who were not they weren't flying obviously but they were former blue angels pilots narrating what we were seeing out in the bay that's pretty awesome and they called in one of the one of the days to one of their buddies up in the air and said buzz the potomac wow and they knew where, where right where we were because you can see it from yeah wherever and they maybe 10 feet above the oh my god so you had people looking like they're gonna jump overboard yeah yeah it was, so, I, it was so loud so sudden it's so unexpected only once i kind of had that where we were doing fleet week and we we happened to be on the deck of a ship while the show started oh. we didn't even time it that way because we had to wait in line for hours yeah and then they were like you said not 10 feet but pretty close this one they were very close because yeah you know, those pilots know what they're doing yeah they do <laughs> but it's a, you know so back here's the above the fan tail okay so as you can see we live on a very active waterfront it's a lot of fun oh yeah i'm lucky enough to live right in over there and when we are sailing we put a lot of um chairs that are stored in these and oh i see we have a lot of folding chairs that go there okay very nice this is an original chris craft for boaters they know what that is i do know the name that's a like a teak wood it's a, it's a wood yeah it's a wooden yeah. motorboat is it for uh it's, it's emergency if, yep. okay so do you check it regularly and all that has to it's, i it's imagine all maintained yeah, regularly, you yeah. got it right. <laughs> and when they do MOB drills, man overboard drills, or yeah. MOB, yeah. Overboard, they'll do it in the estuary and they'll usually put a couple of the lifeboats in the water to make sure they're working and that the crew know how to get them there. Get them back okay, up. yeah, you got to better know how to do that, yeah. right? Wow, so standing here, you're right above the fantail where we were, and that's where the bench was, right? Correct, yeah, pretty special, huh? It is. Yep. So this is probably the only ship of like it in the world, I would think. It is. It, I'm sure it is. I mean, there are others. It's I'm been sure. restored oh, this, this class, well. Like Coast Guard cutters. This yeah. One. I don't know if any others are out there restored this well. But you know, you know, you've been on military ships. Yeah. Over in San Francisco, yeah. over in Alameda. There's plenty that are out there. Yeah. The, the, I've been on a couple of them. The one that's one of my favorite is in Long Beach, the USS Iowa. Oh, I haven't been on that it's one. It's a massive destroyer. It's it's so big. I would love to go on that. Eight of these on the upper deck. Really? It's so huge. It's wow. worth going. And it's beautifully restored. Yeah. And a crew of hundreds maintain it on a regular basis. It's so large. I I did, saw a video on their website where they have five or six volunteers that drive down from Northern California, stay there on the ship for a week, to help work on it as a volunteer, and then they come back home. Wow. They do that monthly. Hmm. You know, retired folks. Yeah. Very cool. But it's a, you know, it's just a, so the Elvis Presley story is when this yeah. was, I'll probably get the sequence a little bit off. Yeah. But when it landed at Jack London Square, yeah. it was docked there, not knowing what was going to happen to it. And they decided, um, the Coast Guard went on board and it was docked right next to a larger ship that was apparently in the evening un unloading bales of marijuana onto this ship. It was privately owned at the time. And it's not clear in what I've read that this was ever, this in the 50s? In the pot. It was in the 60s, 50s, and okay. 60s. But pot was found on the ship, so they confiscated oh both ships. This one was towed a little bit away. Yeah. And they confiscated the other ship completely. And this one then was pulled into or floated into, I'm not sure what, but it hit a pylon in the bow and it sunk. So the smokestacks were all you could really see above water. Wow, it went really deep. It went deep. Yeah, wow. it, it, it sunk. Wow. So it was below water for a while. Uh -huh. it was, and, and then when they finally put all the floating um pontoons underneath it to raise it up apparently elvis presley got involved then to buy it and restore it and give it to danny thomas for him to have at saint jude's medical center for children and auction it off probably for scrap right. to raise money for the children's hospital danny thomas's comments were we're not in the boat business we're in the saving children business got it no thank you oh, i see so then elvis and the his crew sold it to the port and the guy that got it was our then head of the association wally abernathy walter abernathy yeah and he owned it and said let's auction it because they could see it was so badly damaged so they offered it i think for 
$14,999. Wow. Nobody took it. So huh. I ended up staying with the port. And then at that time, Jimmy Roosevelt, my Uncle Jim, the, the oldest boy of FDR's boys, yeah. went to President Reagan and said, you were an FDR Democrat and you voted for him four times. Yeah. Help us raise the money yeah. to restore the ship. Yeah. And they showed him pictures of it you know, up on a truck. It was in really bad shape. So he said, I'll put three or four million dollars in the federal budget. His advisor said, you can't do that. He said, I'm not hearing what you're saying. And he did. <laughs> so he put the money in the budget and they were able to then raise other money, capital, to then ultimately take it up to the stock and shipyards and restore it. Wow. Elvis owned it for, you know, a nanosecond, just to change hands. But he, the, his whole intention was to raise money for St. Jude's. And he yeah, he wanted to raise it. Be it, was a a good way. it was a charity. Yeah, it was a good, good thing he was doing. But it was so badly damaged at that time. Hmm. Wow. That's a cool story. So there's story. one picture that I've, that I've seen of Elvis and Danny Thomas standing on the bow yeah. where we were in the front. Yeah. And it, they put up a signs of USS Potomac behind them, yeah. which is, was never really there, but they did it for the sake oh, of publicity. Oh, I see. I see. But there's a picture of Elvis on the ship. And that was in the, the Oakland and Harbor? It was, it, I think it was in, in, in here. Oh, wow. Or maybe, a ja maybe over there in, in uh, Treasure yeah. Island. Huh. And by then, Elvis is extremely famous. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So it got restored. It took a number of years. It's on. You've watched the video online, right? I did. It's I watched so, everything I could, okay, yeah. There's a video of the whole history of it. It's a 14-minute video. Yeah, I watched it. It explains how that happened yeah. and what, what it took to repair it. And yeah, there's a lot involved. They, it's a lot they involved. stripped it down. I mean, as nothing. you can see, it's just remarkably Yeah, they did an amazing restored. job. And it's that, that well, it's, it's re completed in 95. 95, 94, 95, yeah. Yeah, so it's 20, what, 28 years now? About roughly, yeah. Wow. First time I came on the ship was in... Uh, Maybe 2000, I was living in Los Angeles, and we got an invitation for as many family members as we could find to come mm. up and go on one of the inaugural cruises, or many, yeah. to go out in the bay, and food was going to be served in the salon below, uh -huh. prepared on the ship while we were out sailing nice. around the bay. So there was a lot of cousins on the ship. My dad had passed by then, but there was a bunch of us on the ship, and we were eating, and I, I was blown out by it. So I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I think when I left either that day or a couple months later when I was up here again, I bought my vest. Yeah. So I owned, I've owned this for a long time before I knew I'd be in this role. Really? Yeah. That's pretty awesome, Pressing actually. It, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was. I thought I should wear this for the job interview. I didn't. That's a that it was and still is um, a Coast Guard vessel. But when lighthouses up and down the coast needed to have relief, right? That would go and anchor off the coast and let the co let the lighthouse keepers get a break for days or a week at a time and they'd light up their two lights on the top oh while no they way while they dropped anchor huh off the coast to let let them i've never relief. i've never heard about that oh, it doesn't do it anymore it doesn't go anywhere and this great big ship here the john glenn not a container ship it looks like one no but... it does but it's not it is a ship that goes i've never seen it move since i've been here oh wow when it does go out it goes out to sea and can lower the center section down to sea level or below, yeah. and pull ships on that need repair, oh. repair them, and then push them okay. back out, and then go back out. And I've the seen uh, uh, like a videos. documentary type yeah. thing, a mighty ships, I think it was called. There you go. And they showed one of those. Wow. One of our captains sent the captain of this ship an email saying, I want to bring my executive director over. He wants to tour your ship. I've never heard from her yet. Well, I'm mm. going to try to get over there on that ship. Usually if I wear this or my Potomac hat, Yeah. I, I get a little further than yeah. normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a lot of regulations at ports, they, and they should. It, yeah, it's like uh, since 9/11, ports are. But it's a pretty special. The ferry boats coming and going. I mean, it's just a real. Yeah. And as Oakland and the and, and this whole area with the port of Oakland building, as as Jack London Square sort of rehabs itself and comes back to life, it's yep. gonna be remarkable. I see. I get to actual recording of the president. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sitting in the little cabin of the little Potomac in the harbor of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, after a day of sunshine out in the Gulf Stream. But I cannot in person attend one of the many Jackson Day dinners I regret. But it is good that you are again 
celebrating the memory of a great American leader who believed fanatically almost in the principles of a democracy based on the freedom of the ballot box. I try to get away a couple of times a year on these short trips on salt water. In Washington, as you know, the working day of the presidency in these times averages about 15 hours. And even when I go to Hyde Park or to Walt Springs, the White House office, the callers, the visitors, and the telephones all follow me. But at sea, the radio messages and the occasional pouch of mail reduce official work to not more than two or three hours a day. So there is a chance for a bit of sunshine or a wetted line or a biography, or a detective story, or even a nap after lunch. But above all, there is the opportunity for thinking things through, for differentiating between principles and mere methods, between the really big things of life and those other things of the moment that may seem all important today and yet are forgotten by the world in a month. That means that if today the fellow next to you catches a bigger fish than you do, or vice versa, as sometimes happens, you don't lie awake at night thinking about it. Look at that. That's a piston for one of the engines. This is Misha down here. You may want to get him on here. Okay. Misha! There's become famous. Uh-oh. A little interview with you. What? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Uh, it's too early today to tell. Yeah? Usually, I feel much better about how I am around... Uh... <laughs> Ignore this. <laughs> By about... Uh, Quarter to eleven in the evening. I know I am for the day. Have you had your coffee? I can't tell a lie, but in this case, I won't. Okay. I did. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> Are you an official interviewer or? I am a YouTube vlogger, and I have a channel, and I'm filming this for my channel. Seriously? Yeah. You very own YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's easy to do. You can have one. Uh. <laughs> I think I'm already spending too much of my life on the computer, ah. so it's time to detox, actually. Got it. But uh, I understand that. Yeah, but in this case, I will obviously make an exception to see how I appear for the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your history with the ship? Um, I was at the University of uh, Berkeley. Okay. In Berkeley. Yeah. For a short period of time. I think it was only about 44 years. Oh, only. <laughs> and uh, finally decided to retire. Were but, you a teacher or a professor or? Thank you for all those compliments. No? Okay. I was a laboratory associate. Okay. Don't confuse that with laboratory. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you degree. got from doing that to here. That's correct, and so this is a graduation for me. Yeah. <laughs> With a supervisor like that. So you, you volunteer, do you, what, you, you come and volunteer to upkeep, or what do you, a um, little sir, bit of everything. Yeah. Please explain to this gentleman. He volunteers, and he's here as often as he needs to be here. <laughs> Generous with his time, to say that. Okay. Least. They're definitely uh, very resourceful in there are a gazillion and one tasks to do. Yeah. And I get my choices and... Uh, nice. You get re with supervisors like President Ford. <laughs> and you get reward. You get re you know what that means? I get the reward of working with people like Well, this. he gets reward for uh, his work, too. Well, it's... Knowing you're working on a historic vehicle or not vehicle. Sure, that's, sure. That's and once a day, see, once a week, seems like a good time for volunteer for the community and some other community work that I do. Correct. So uh, I, I think I'm still being useful to society. Well, you got, is that paint or putty? Paint. Uh, this is a pre-paint. Oh, okay. Primer. That's correct. 
That's thick. And why aren't you working on here then? <laughs> <laughs> I did all that stuff. In my, Thank I, you. I used to paint houses, interior. Of, uh, know, okay. In that's... Tiburon. <laughs> okay, we got you, Misha. You're on camera now. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Oh, I like that. The White House doghouse. Yeah, so this is the engine room. You need me to call your agent, Tom. Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. All right. When the boat sank, the original engines were destroyed. Right. Um, these are two engines that came out of a World War II era tugboat. Oh. And they were donated by Crowley Marine. Uh, interesting. They're Enterprise engines. Their originals were uh, Winton, much bigger engine. Um, they are 1943 engines. Okay. And, and they were used in the tugboat up until the uh, mid 80s when they were pulled out and of their straight six diesels i imagine straight or? six diesel in line six right these are direct reversing engines they are connected directly to the shafts we change a head gasket it's usually five guys working for two days and you sleep real well when you're done it's a lot the of head work. alone is 500 so you'd have to have a crane to get it off we actually do yeah you know, we have um up above, you can see over there. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, see yeah there's a rail and yeah. a dolly. And directly above you here. And then, uh, oh, yeah. And then it has to be torqued down and all that. These. Right. And, um, no, this is actually, this is interesting. These are actually reinforcing bolts that go through the block. Oh, wow. But these are the ones, the studs for the head. Uh, each nut, 1,000 foot pounds. <laughs> Which you don't do that by hand. No. <laughs> well, actually, you do. You do. But we have what's a called huge a huge um, torque wrench. Yeah, very large torque wrench. So if we walk down here, these are the air tanks that hold the, uh, the storage tanks for starting the engines. Okay. We have four of them, two on this, this side. This is the air you're talking about? Yeah, high okay. pressure air. Right now, it's the air compressor will probably come on in a minute because it'll come up to about 218 psi. So what is the air, does the air like force the pistons to get moving or? Yeah, just like in a, you know, when it combusts, okay. you've got the pressure pushing it down. Right. In this case, um, the air valve opens up and puts air pressure okay. just to get the engine rolling. And, and then, then it, it stops and then the fuel, the diesel gets in there. Right. Got it. Now an oil change on these things is about 75 to 85 gallons. Wow. So I get two barrels of, gal uh, of oil per in, uh, 50 oil change. 55 gallon drums. Right. Or, uh... And we change the oil and then the excess oil goes into this makeup tank. So as time goes on, it either uses oil or leaks oil and we pump a little extra oil into the reserve. And how many, these are done by C hours? Is that why? We just do it by date. Date, okay. Yeah. Um, Sounds like an expensive oil change. Though. About $2,500. Yeah. Between the oil and the... It's uh, not Jiffy Lube. Yeah, and the uh, the filters. The filters alone, uh, uh, it's a set of filters, of seven filters, and they're like socks about this long, about this big around. And I doubt they're made a lot anymore, right? Oh, no, no, you can get them. You can get them. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, in fact, there's a couple... I've discovered there's a couple of companies that make them. Oh. Um, and this is a water oil separator. We pump, if any oil drips into the bilge or water gets in there, okay. we pump it in here. Okay. We let it sit for a month or two. The water and oil separate. We pull off the water from the bottom, dispose of that. Okay. And then we pump the oil out and dispose of that. Okay. Just like the used oil. It no. goes to recycle. So these are called dry sump engines. Um, so the oil is pumped out of the engine into this where the, any air or whatever is separated. And then it goes through the filters. <coughs> and then the, the clean oil goes back to the engine. Wow. So when we change oil, we put about 40 gallons in the engine. We put about uh, 15 or 20 in here. Okay. And then the remainder, uh, we just bring it up to about here. We're good. So that's it. And then the remainder goes into the makeup tank. So when this is um, out in the bay, there's always people down here monitoring it no actually we usually have one engineer he okay. gets everything started he makes sure everything's running right and then yeah. uh he rare sometimes they stay down below but not usually oh okay yeah <laughs> and as you as i said the engines run in both directions so you'll see that this uh tachometer yeah also runs in both directions oh wow 
That's definitely uh, unusual. Yeah. Not the kind of thing you get on average. <laughs> Down here. Honestly, I, I had no idea that engines could run in both directions yeah. until, you, this, until today. Now this is um, a pyrometer. It tells you the exhaust temperatures. Okay. So you can monitor in case. There should not be much difference in the exhaust temperatures if they're all running correctly. And if it, if it gets hotter, then If one gets hot or, or one gets cold, like if one gets cold, maybe that cylinder's not working. I see. You know, or if one's running really hot, there may be something else that's wrong. Right. Um, water temperature, fuel oil pressure. Control air is the air that goes to our air. Air pressure is what controls our throttle right here. And we have lube oil pressure and lube oil temperature. Okay. Okay, I did run these engines earlier today. Yeah, I feel a little warmth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How often are you required to run them? You're As not... needed. If okay. we're not going out all the time, then I, I will do like we did today. I will run them for about uh, 20, 30 minutes just to make sure that everything's got oil on it. There's no condensation built up in the cylinders. And all, during the entire shutdown for COVID, yeah. the en all these engines were run once a month. Okay. So that's what we did. It's been about a month since the last time we went out. So it was due. And uh, we're going to be going out hopefully next week for a Coast Guard exam. Awesome. And uh, I wanted to make sure everything ran. I got a question. You said it's direct drive. So when you're testing the engines, <laughs> there's a way to disconnect the drive shaft? <coughs> nope. No. No. We're firmly tied up, but I run one engine forward and one engine back. <laughs> okay. To balance it out okay so there is some there'll be some torque forces but not i was going to say, say you're literally it's always doing something when yeah. they're running right right yeah there's uh there's no such thing as idling wow huh we'll take a quick look here okay and then uh, a couple other things oh there's two controls and this controls these are the, the forward reverse. I, I've taken the air off, so nothing's going to happen. Okay. But what you do with this, yeah. you unscrew this to unlock it. If I want this to go reverse, I put it in that position, uh -huh. start it, come back out, I have full throttle. Okay. If I want to reverse that and go forward, I come here, engine stops, the cam shifts, that entire length, there's a, the cam goes from here all the way up to here. That entire thing shifts, this thing rocks over, start it in the forward position, and then forward throttle. Okay. So the cam ha has double um, sets. sets on it. Right. Forward One for sets. forward and reverse. So we have your intake, your exhaust, your fuel injection, and the air start valve. Okay. So there's eight cams for each cylinder. Wow. Yeah. It's like a modern Honda motor. <laughs> VTEC, right? Right, right. But these are built in the 40s. Right. And uh, now the question, the captain's up there. He has exactly the same controls. Is it direct control for him too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are air controls. Got it. And uh, this is what controls it, whether it's going to be local down here. Yeah. Or up there. Now the air has gone up to the okay. uh, pilot house. Which, these would not move though when he's controlling it, right? No, okay. no, they won't. They just yeah. does. It, this is completely bypassed when he's controlling it, Got and it. vice versa. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Huh? So, Very interesting. Yeah. So we have two air compressors, and they're automatic. They're actually ready. They'll probably come on in a minute or two. Yeah. Um, we have two bilge pumps, and once a month. Just spin them to make sure that they work. Yep. And uh, now these are in case water got in here. It, yeah, here or this any is, of the other. That's an intake or no? It's yeah. Nice. Okay. That's the in intake from the bilge bilges, and then there's control valves down there. Yeah. That go to the forward compartments and the aft compartments. Say, say that forward crew compartment got a hole. Right. And you had water flooding in there. Right. Well, you'd open up the appropriate valve. And run the bilge pump. Okay. But it would also keep the water from going into the other ones. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. There's our little uh, fire pump. That's a 12 and a half horsepower English air cooled diesel. English made. British yeah. made. British made. Air cooled um, diesel. Yeah. Um, Not a lot of airflow out down here, though. 
<laughs> well, actually, there actually is quite a bit. Um, I mean, you don't have overheating issues with it. They should oh no, no, yeah. no. Well, it's it's forced uh, forced air. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes forced a little air. more sense. So that's uh, that's how that works, and it's kind of a. Does this make much noise? Yeah, it's pretty noisy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay. Diesel yeah. make that noise. Well, now these things kind of run on really thick, thick diesel, right? No, they they run on regular diesel. Oh, they do. They okay. Because I was. Um, they don't run on the uh, the fuel oil that yeah. you're thinking of, the, or the bunker fuel. Yeah, is. the bunker fuel. Bunker fuel is the correct way of. You, you know, you've got the right bunker fuel if you can walk on it. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> it's like play doh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's more like yeah. It's more like tar. Yeah. Yeah. And these are the incredibly loud generator motors. Right. right. Hmm. So um, another six, huh? Yeah. Inline sixes are in many ways the most efficient because they have primary balance, so you don't need a big flywheel or you don't need a dampener. Right. To for the harmonics. Right. Um, so that that saves most every diesel. All of those trucks going down the road, those yeah. are all straight sixes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I used to have a 240Z oh, Datsun. Yeah. yeah. 2.4 liter straight six. That was a wonderful car. Right. A lot of the old BMWs were straight sixes. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I had a 635 too, and that was a straight six. Yeah. So. The buddy of mine had a, uh, what was it? The CBX 1000 motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Six yep. cylinder. It's very valuable bike these days. Those things are skyrocketing. I was in Thailand, yeah, and uh, at uh, Chiang Mai where uh, Angkor Wat is. Yeah, and I look over and the Royal, uh, no, no, yeah, the Royal Cambodian Police or or oh, riding Police, those things. He was riding one. Wow. I said, oh man, I thought, God, what would I have to do to buy that? Yeah. Especially if it came with the logo. Oh, lot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Get that cool. shit back. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Um, Electrical panel. Yep. It's got lockouts. So if I want to have shore power, I have to first shut this off, shift this over, generator one or two, and they're mutually exclusive. Okay. You, you can't turn on two okay. at, at a time. Is that for overload? You, well, uh, yeah. And also, if the phases weren't right, they would interfere and blow everything oh up. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. So there's that. Um, this tells us it's three phase. So we have three phases of power, and I can tell each one has a different electrical load. Yeah. That way. Um, this one is currently on generator one, which is off. Generator two is off. Shore power. Okay. And uh, this would tell the... Uh, I don't know why the... Oh, that's for the generators. That's right. Yeah, this is the shore power one. Again, telling me... The voltage on mm -hmm. each leg of mm -hmm. the three-phase. Three All right. So, anyway. Um, Very cool. Major controls. And An we'll do one more fun thing. Okay. Um, we will now go to We're the doing point. engine startup now? Yeah. These are the mains. We're not going to do the generators. We don't need to. <laughs> and they're too loud. <laughs> I'd rather not. Okay, you can just hang out there, Ocel? Yes, I am. All right. Okay. Oh, and that's uh, Bill up there. Okay. All right. Oops. There we go. Good air pressure. Good. Good. Check. Okay. That's just making sure that the uh, cam's in the right position. Okay.
the prop speed down here. What's that? The propeller speed. Is there a... Same as that. Oh, okay. about how loud some engines are. These aren't too bad. Well, I can fire up the generators, but I'd rather not. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's funny, the size doesn't mean anything, does it? No, one of the loudest engines I ever uh, I ever used was uh, about 150 cc's. Really? Yeah. Oh, good lord. Enough to knock your fillings out. Horrible. Wow. Well, thank you for doing that. That's pretty cool. I thought you'd like that. Yeah. yeah. A very competent group of, uh, of uh, volunteers to yeah. help us keep everything running. Awesome. And uh, our maintenance days are generally just Mondays and Tuesdays. We come and take care of it. all throughout COVID. Well, at that time, the volunteers would come in individually. Okay. Um, or the place was big enough, you'd have one guy way forward, one guy way back, or Everybody's yeah, masked up. Yeah, everybody masked up and far apart. Yeah. Most importantly. But uh, yeah, there you go. So during the week on the normal like springtime, is this open to the public or? Yes. Okay. Uh, there is. Uh, you go over to the office, make arrangements for a tour. Okay. And I think it's like ten bucks. Okay. Something like that. Um, then they come and they the docents will carry take you through. Okay. They just kind of by appointment. You don't just show up and do it. You or? can, but it's better by appointment. Okay. Um, yeah, better if you call ahead. Yeah. Tell them you're coming. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for showing me everything. All that right. was awesome. All right. Oh, 12 exactly. Ready? Well noon, time to have lunch. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Tom, for everything. All right, Paul. All kinds of things you don't normally do. And a lot of people, I mean, some of our volunteers are, we're, you yep. know, totally white collar, but they come here and they, they can accomplish something they see with their hands. Right. You know, and that, that counts for a lot. I bet. I mean, I've been at this long enough. I walk by, I go, oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Yeah. Of course, but also you get a chance to go, well, let's see, we could, we could improve that. Well, you got salt water working its way. Yeah, 165 feet of steel sitting in salt water. What could go wrong? So th this ship over here was... Uh, Ford was saying is a floating lighthouse basically it was it was um, pretty neat the relief was anchored about uh, I think 10 miles past the Golden Gate Bridge it's a lighthouse in fact uh, apparently the uh, the lights still work huh. uh, right now it's a training ship for merchant mariners okay. or a crew yeah but um, yeah they were anchored out there and uh, the crew would exchange every six months so they'd be there six months straight. Wow. No matter what the weather. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Very neat. Well, everyone, thank you for coming along. I have my tour of the U.S. Potomac, USS Potomac here in Oakland, Jackland and Square. It was very interesting. I got a full tour. Really appreciate Ford and Tom showing me around and taking the time. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I'm doing, um, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you on my next video.